let's just go with the moment and not talk about that track. Just how do you see the piano? As a multi-instrumentalist, what does the piano mean to you in like your palette, if we're getting that arty about it? Um, well, I, I guess it's just got the biggest range um, and everything's laid out in a very logical way. I'm, I'm quite like a nerdy person, so I quite like the way the piano is laid out. It's just very linear. <laughs> yeah. And um, But yeah, like I guess it was kind of the first thing that taught me about any kind of music theory. It was what made me learn like the numbers system, which I'm sure you're, I'm sure you know all about. And well, um, if they don't out there, well, how do you see the numbers? Yeah. So the way I think about just music in in general is is all in numbers. So if you're like in the uh, any major scale, so C major for instance, then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notes in the scale. But you also have seven chords, and those chords, I mean, like are, are something like. C major 7, D minor 7, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and then, I mean, you can kind of do what you want here. I, I usually think of, I don't ever really use this diminished thing. Anyway, it's a bit nerdy, but, but yeah, like, and then like B diminished, half diminished. And then, um, so and that, then. Just to jump in there, how do you see that then? I often see it as, like a, I'll only ever use that as a five over three. Exactly, yeah. So you can you can think so it, when playing that chord, it's very, very rare in, in pop yeah. in pop music yeah. for anyone to play this. Unless unless you're playing unless you're playing jazz. But um but so it's it's easier to think of the B chord as like a G major chord, but with B in the bass. Right, yeah. And so you can play it something like this, like or or uh, and then like resolves very nicely. Um, but yeah, that's always how I've thought about music ever since I started learning the piano. Um, and it was more of a thing of like just listening to people's songs and being like, just picking up patterns. I remember like learning like a chord progression, something like, you know, like the classic one is like just the two of us. Uh, uh, something like that. And then, um, and then being like, like why why does why does why does that work and why is it when I play this chord it, it works as well as a substitute for the three or something or for the four um, and like why why is it when I go this this chord this chord isn't even in it's a minor chord I'm meant to play a major chord here and stuff like this anyway um, I feel like I'm waffling on a bit but yeah you, you get the not idea on. Yeah, that's yeah. what we want to know how you think <laughs> when someone's as good as you the bit is how what are you thinking. So when you're waffling, you're not waffling on it, it's beautiful. So how do you get so fluent in all keys? Oh, or, and like, or in that mo moment? Do you not feel like you are? Do you no, feel like you have some not. strong ones? Definitely. Because I feel exactly the same. Yeah. By the way, that's not me like being like, <laughs> oh, God, like you don't feel fluent <laughs> on all the keys. Mate, yeah. It's like, if I'm F, F sharp, I am uh, F sharp is a tricky one. Oh no, F me. sharp's all right. Is a it, what's your a, bogey keys? A is quite hard, and E, E, I hate E, e. so it much. It feels like you're walking on hot coals. It's so weird, because <laughs> because all guitar music is in E, or a lot of guitar music yeah. is in E. E and minor? So, e minor is lovely. Come I mean. on. Ooh, Ooh. Okay. There you go. But, <laughs> and... Um, what did you, what, so what were you thinking there? Oh, uh, well... <laughs> E minor is just G major. So like, you can, you can think of like any, so when I was talking about the number system, yeah. you do have a number system within the minor scales as well, but it's easier for me to think of, of its relative major. So for those of you who don't know, like if you have a major scale, if you go down from the root one, two, three semitones, um, then you've got the relative minor. And if you have a minor key and you go, the other way, you go three semitones up, then you have the relative major. So you were talking about E minor, and I was like, hmm, that's really just G major, that's how I think. And then and then I just played a 251 with stupid amounts of notes in them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, but... that bravery, man. <laughs> and one thing that you did when I said what you're thinking there, mm. I love how you are how you use your left hand and you're reinforcing the lots of little walks into chords in your left hand. Is that just something you picked up? Or who, who, uh, oh, do I do that? Do you have, yeah, like there when you did it, you, you might walk up, but, or like put something else in the bass. 
mm. all the time. Yeah, really. I, I, uh, I, I guess there's some. But yeah. Yeah, it's always you know what it always, always is. It's always like the fifth sort of thing. Yeah, I I just learned that from classical music, really. Well, like neoclassical music. I used to play a lot of um, Ludovico Inaudi. Do you know him? Yes. And then like all of his songs are like. And like it's all like left. Yeah. Yeah, it's like really nice. Yeah. So being a multi instrumentalist again, getting into where you're thinking, that way that you're reinforcing with your left hand. When you play bass, is that just going to a whole new world? Or do you feel that you're always thinking from the piano? I'm, yeah, I always think about the piano, man. Yeah. What, what do you think about when you play other instruments? Are you, are you the same? I kind of had to burn it. I felt like I had to burn the piano to play, really? for guitar especially. Mm. I just felt guitar was, I was, the where I sucked for so many years, I still do, is that um, I was, trying to emulate what I did on piano on guitar and then when I relinquished to the kind of idiom of like just learning the same shapes as everyone yeah I thought people started being oh you sound good now because <laughs> you know? yeah. that spaced out sound I love that spaced out sound you've got it it's beautiful it's so open well you have your little transpose it, pedal for the guitar yes exactly well, yeah. so, it yeah. feels like guitar to me is thirds and and piano is like fourths it's like open interesting but the guitar is tuned in fourths but the shapes all often in, f in my brain make everything very tight. Mm. Everything seems narrow. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, you can, you can spread out so much more on piano. I mean, you know, like this voicing, I mean, it's classic voicing. Like, you know, it's like the first thing you learn at jazz school. Isn't but it? Like, <laughs> I, but like, I, I, like, yeah, I can remember watching D'Angelo. I, I always put my thumb in there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can just really, like, like really pad things out. But, um, uh, but then um, let's get a shot of that Falcon. Come in, Kenny Barron. I think Ken is the name of this voicing the guy who kind of pioneered it. But it's basically just like fifths, all fifths. So you play a fifth, and then you play another fifth, and you play another fifth, and then you go one semitone up, and you play a fifth. Well, you play that note, and then you play the fifth of that, and then you play the fifth of that, and then you get a nice minor chord. And then if you move all this up one semitone. Then you get like a sharp eleven kind of vibe, Please. <laughs> and then if you get, you, and then if you move this finger down, you can get like a dominant sharp eleven. Wow. Um, but yeah, and yeah, you just can't do that on guitar, you know, um, unless you're. Can we have a little segue? Because on. one bit, I don't think when you were setting up, I was blown away by you playing this Nashville guitar over there. Maybe oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll put that in at the end, just a bit of you noodling, mate, because it sounds so, how that refreshes the voicing. Anyway, back to this. Yeah. I love, again, I could speak to you for hours about this, but maybe, do you have, what's the thing that you hear in piano players that you think they should know? And a lot, you, Is there something you think, if only these guys just did this, or is there a voicing that unlocked, that you think that could unlock people's potential? Um, I guess it depends what you're playing. I, I mean, the thing I always say to people is like when they ask me about like any kind of theory or piano stuff is just the numbers system that we talked about earlier. Um, I, I feel like the numbers system just unlocked everything for me because not only is it just like, you know, easy to like play pop songs and you know, there's only seven chords and like you can't, as soon as you find the key, like you can unlock any song. I mean, it's like you were talking about uh, earlier, yeah. like, like Jack was saying how, if you play this in your right hand, you can play any, you can play like any song. Yeah. And then you can do stuff like this. No, you got the touch, man. You can do what this if you're feeling really... <laughs> but, Hang on, I've never um, oh, you can definitely do that. You can definitely do that. Yeah, you can't do that. But yeah, um... But yeah, number system. But you know what? I, I, a mutual friend of ours, maybe Ruben James. Yes. Yeah. yeah? Um, he taught me something the Shout other day. Shout out, Ruben. Shouts to Ruben. He he taught me something the other day. That I think he learned from Herbie Hancock. You know, just casually. You know, his mate. <laughs> Slumming it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, it was just. I mean, this is a very jazzy voicing. 
but you know. Come in, Farrah, we're getting. This is, this is crazy jazz. <laughs> so, so imagine you're playing like a ballad or something. Um, so it's just a dominant chord. So basically, a dominant chord, all it is, is just this, right? But you can do like loads of alterations to this. So one of them might be maybe you want to add in like like a like a like a thirteenth or something. So maybe you want to play something like this. But you can also add in like a flat nine if you want. Right? Or you could add in like a sharp eleven, like that. And so that's what the voicing is. It's like flat nine, sharp eleven, and um, yeah, there we go. And um, it just sounds good when just doing any sort of tritone substitution. And functioning as a five. Are you thinking that yes. as yeah. five tone? Well, yeah. So, so for instance, so I play this song a lot with my friend Alice. Um, we have this cover of Crazy He Calls Me, which is like a jazz standard like ballad sort of thing. And it goes like this, it's like the chords are like D major, E minor, and then like D of F sharp, and then G. And then it's like this. And then there's like this chord. Right, but that's that. That's how the song goes. But if you play, um, <laughs> then it's, it just kind of sounds like kind of cool sometimes. Yeah. It, it, you know, if it's like a big part, point in the song, this voicing just adds. It just feels so jazz. <laughs> it's like if you want to take it there, and you can do crazy stuff like you know. There's one part in the song where it's like, uh, sorry, so like. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I love that voicing. Beautiful play. Something like that. But you know a bit about beautiful playing, Jack. I but I hear everyone out like you and I hear Bingham and my friend Mike Patrick. It seems to come from another place. That's what's beautiful about the piano. It's technically, mm. we should sound what, the same because you play that C. It's the great leveler. Mm. That's why I think it's a great instrument. I wish more people got into the piano. I'm surprised more people pick up guitar than piano in some way. It's weird, man. I, I used to go to a lot of jams and. Um... Keyboardist, there's always like one keyboardist in the whole jam, and there's like 30 guitarists that all turn up with like their backpacks with a guitar. And there's never any keyboardists, man. So pick and to up me, piano. guitar's really hard because I think of it like a lie detector. You can hear everyone's, you can hear the truth on stringed instruments to me, which is mm. you hear their vibrato, how confident they are. Mm. Whereas on, and you can hear it on piano, but weirdly, a beginner and you, if you both hit a C, would sound the same. Yeah, I guess it's just what you do in between hitting those And that timing. Yeah, Tom made a great point of it's it's all in just where you put it in time and space, really. Yeah, I mean... And your touch, that's what I mean when I hear your touch is so... It's beautiful. I'll tell you what, we're waffling... I'd love to get you back for a proper check because we're waffling on. And it is late in the day now, so thank you again. Thank you, man. It's been a pleasure. Just do us the honour of playing out, playing us out. On the piano or on that... Little Nashville. On the guitar. Let's On the it. Nashville. Jeez. <laughs> Connor Abbott, and check out, where can we check you out, your music? Spotify, Apple Music. Instagram. Deezer. <laughs> yeah, Deezer, yeah. <laughs> List off every DSP. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I do some videos on Instagram and TikTok. Um, YouTube, there'll be some nice live videos coming out soon. Oh, quick one on um, the Instagram, because I've yeah. a few, when I told, uh, I've got some, I know some young people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and they said, oh, you got Connor Albert coming in. And I can remember one, I said, what do you want to ask him? And they're like, how do you come up with the chord progressions in your snippets on Instagram? If you haven't seen it on Instagram, you mm. do these amazing videos, which to me look like magic, where you're playing all the instruments. I don't know how you do that, but I'm sure you've explained it somewhere else. Do, do you have, is that just in the moment or there, are you thinking the numbers again and you're often... It is, it is in the moment, but everything that informs my sense of chord progression all comes from pop music so I don't I don't listen to any jazz I don't listen to um, soul I don't listen to all I listen to is pop music um, I really love it who, and should, who should we listen to at the moment who do you think is banging I listen to so much uh, I love this guy Jeremy Zucker uh, do you know him yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Crisp. I, I mean it's like it's not like really bait pop music 
but it is pop music. It's it's very somewhat you know sometimes is predictable, but um, I think there there is something to be said for how chord progressions in pop music. You know they have been done millions of times, but there's a reason why they work. You know people really resonate with them for whatever reason. And so when I'm thinking of what chord progression to do, a lot of it is just in the moment, but that in the moment has been informed by years of listening to pop music. Um, so, you know, and I used, I used to like spend a lot of time, when I first started learning piano, I used to be like, oh, I need to make sure this chord progression is like really syncopated, or I need to add in this crazy sharp 11 chord, or, you know, and sometimes I still do that, but like, the stuff that resonates the most with people and also resonates the most with me is just, I just love this chord progression, like. Which is, that's the progression of the beat I made, basically. Um, so something about that is just beautiful, but that's heard on, Ed, like, millions of songs. Um, yeah, there's just obviously something that resonates with, with people about just simple chord progressions. And if you put something in, in the middle, like a little riff or something, um, that's always what I think. Like I try and have like a little melody inside. Like in that beat, there's like a little, um, like a, a little bass line thing that fills in. And I always try and make sure there's one of those. If it's, if it's a beat that's by itself that doesn't have a singer on it or anything like that. But, but yeah. Wise young man, thank you very much. Please. Oh, I did it this time. Let's yeah. do it again. <laughs> <laughs>